Well, hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to Life of Wonders. This is Polo, and I love making videos of toys, toys, and Disney collectibles. And as always, if you like this kind of content and you feel like supporting the channel, then you already know what to do. So today, I want to share with all of you the news about the upcoming release of Barbie Dream Besties doll series that is set to be launched on July the 14th, so in about five weeks from now. And I find it very exciting because it's the most important release in playtime terms since Barbie Extra. Now having a, such a crazy time with a full-time job and extra hours plus many hours I have to dedicate to my studies and research but I needed to make some time for this and in fact I promise that during the summer season I'll do my best to keep up to date with dull news as much as I can so I hope you can all appreciate this given the very limited time I unfortunately have and if I had more time Oh boy, you'll get tired of me, I can guarantee that. And I'm doing this in two languages, um, which is also taking like literally double the time. So, and most of the times I'm doing this in the middle of the night. Um, today, it isn't quite the middle of the night and that's probably why I'm a little bit more awake. Um, but anyhow, so I want to talk about this new series in detail because I think it is much needed and many times I feel that as adult collectors we don't seem to appreciate fully what's behind certain playline releases such as this one. Because before we move on, it is incredibly clear that this series of dolls have been created with a young demographic audience in mind. And in fact, there will be videos and plot stories that will serve as marketing through YouTube Kids as announced on the packaging of these dolls. Now, we as doll collectors can certainly be drawn towards any kind of doll and that includes the ones that aren't marketed towards us. But there are several doll lines that are meant to high demand to doll collectors such as Integrity Toys, Toner Dolls, Brat Collaborations, Collectors and so on. And even though, and especially coming from MGA in the recent years, we've got Playline stuff in relation to those that were certainly appealing to us adult collectors, I think it has proven not to be profitable enough to the point Rainbow High has drastically changed to appeal younger audiences by cutting the budget and so much detail that could have never been understood and appreciated by kids, such as the high fashion references and stuff like that and I do believe that the majority of the sales were coming from us crazy adult collectors taking over the toy aisles. <laughs> anyway, so now when it comes to Brad, so far all of the releases have been clearly directed towards nostalgia adults who grew up with them in terms of the repro dolls or adult collectors in terms of the collaborations such as Cult Gaia, GCDS, Moa and even Always Brats, in my personal opinion, were designed for adult collectors even though they're sold as Playline, but I don't see as many marketing strategies for younger audiences such as the ones produced to cover LOL and G, Twins, Rainbow High and stuff. So I think it wouldn't be fair to compare these with Brats, although I understand it, because even though I believe the creation of these have a bit of a clear desire by Mattel to respond to the Mattel Brad's lost feud for which Mattel isn't allowed legally to use the branding, it's close enough as a superficial gimmick. But the creation of these has been, in my opinion, having real twins in mind, and that is children in between 9 to 12 years old or around, I mean. Um, and understanding this can help us understand the designs and efforts put on it, which I believe is so much better than the current efforts shown by MGA for the new Rainbow High era and now the Rainbow Kids or whatever they're called that they've just been released and they feel like a joke, especially having experienced their exquisite level of detail in the recent um, past. Having said this, I will also be giving you references to all the different designs for the four main characters so you can see Mattel has not just created silly stuff for children but there's some real fashion background behind that even though it's very subtle and basic in comparison to, to the crazy complex and sometimes over the top um, styles that were used from MGA. But I think they're good and relatable to 
once again a 9 to 12 year old child. So the true competitor for this series in my opinion would be the LOL twins which is supposed to target the very same demographic but realistically I don't think children can relate to these thrombotic designs that resonate more with full grown-ups than preteen um, audiences. I mean I like them very much I must say but as a child I would have felt them so unrelatable. Um, so and this series is supposed to feel accessible to this demographic and the way pre-teenagers think about the upcoming teen years and it is more than obvious looking at the bios um, and background stories which uh, represent very early big ideas for children to see themselves in the future such as basically all of them having their own company based on their personality um, they don't even think about being part of an existing fashion school, makeup industry, um, video game designer monsters, but to create their own idealized dream. Similar to a child that loves theme parks and picture themselves creating their own theme park as an adult. It isn't impossible, but naive to say the least. And this isn't bad, it is just an indication of the age frame we're dealing with. But of course, as adults, um, we can love signature pieces as well as my first Barbie, Barbie Extra or anything in between. Although, as an adult myself, I would be more critical towards the so-called collector releases than these Playline releases because as much as it could be painful to admit, the creative team isn't thinking 100% about us. Um, or what we like and appreciate as adults when creating them, even though there are bits and pieces that touch us very cleverly somehow, and I will cover those too. So, I mean, I do love dolls, toys, and Disney collectibles, and I always say this at the beginning of my videos, so I leave my passion for this understanding that I do love this fear of toys which isn't really made for my demographic. Though I believe we all have an inner child and it's satisfying to me to keep having that pretty much alive by enjoying the hobby, but not forgetting I'm an adult and I should know better than my younger child. So now having all this perfectly clear, let's get into it. We're presented with four dolls that are based on a younger version, I believe, of the four main characters part of the current Barbie cinematic sphere, such as Malibu Barbie, Brooklyn Barbie that was introduced to us, I believe, back in 2019 with the direct-to-Netflix Big City Big Dreams, and then Teresa and Rene, which are part of the Dream House Adventures and, and the subsequent, you know, movies that um, have have raised uh, from from that sphere, representing four different backgrounds that I assume to this day to be the bare minimum of representation. So I really want to see more in those terms because this is like the stereotypical representation in the USA. But I don't, and I know, I mean, this is all coming from um, that part of the world, so I get it. Um, but in other areas, I don't see as much, I don't know, Middle Eastern representation or North African representation or native South American representation other than this sort of like mixed race already, uh, post-colonial um, Hispanic sort of like representation that appears um, in the United States. So. I wish we could see more of that, but anyway, this is the bare minimum. And I will talk in depth about all of them individually, and we'll share the fashion references and more things that I've found.